Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert teachers here at E2 Language. If you're preparing for your PTE the night before your test, then this video is for you. Or if you just wanna get a bit of an idea of what PTE is about. What I'm going to do in this video is take you through all 20 tasks, kind of like a crash course, and I'm gonna explain them to you quite quickly. Let's start with speaking read aloud. This is the first task of the PTE that you will get on test day. It's relatively straightforward. It's going to look like this. And what will happen is you'll have about 30 or 40 seconds to prepare to read this paragraph of text here, right? And then what happens after the 30 or 40 seconds preparation time is over, this will turn into a recorder and you'll have to read this as clearly as you possibly can. It's a nice task to start your test with because it's pretty straightforward, right? And plus you're not uh, spontaneously thinking of language, you're just reading text off the screen. However, you do wanna read this in a way that maximizes your intonation and pausing and connected speech and chunking and all those wonderful elements of uh, oral fluency. So don't just read it like a robot. That's number one. Cool bananas, let's push on. Second task of the speaking section is called repeat sentence. And it looks like this, doesn't look like much. What's going to happen is you're going to hear a single sentence. You're going to memorize this single sentence. And then after the sentence has finished, you'll have to say that sentence exactly as it was said, okay? Word for word in the same order and try to use the same intonation and rhythm that the speaker used as well. Pretty straightforward. You'll get a number of these tasks, by the way. You don't just get one each. You get between sort of three or five or six. I can't quite remember exactly. Okay, the next, whoop, that's what the sentence will look like. Blah, 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 blah. The next task is the first task where you need to actually think on your feet or speak spontaneously. And it's called describe image. And it's a little bit, well, a little bit challenging. It's very challenging. This is how it works. So you'll see a screen like this and you'll see a, an image, a graph like this, a pie chart, line graph, an image like a photograph. It could be anything really. Uh, now what happens, you'll have 25 seconds to analyze this image, okay? And when the 25 seconds is up, you'll then have 40 seconds to describe this image in your own words. Whoa, it's, this, is, this, is, this is probably, I think, the hardest speaking task in the PT um, because A, there's the analysis of the graph that happens in just 25 seconds and then B, there's the description of the graph where you need to try to control how you speak to make sure that you speak fluently and coherently without too many hesitations or pauses or ums and ahs, making sure your pronunciation is very clear. And of course, you're speaking on topic on that graph. This one requires lots of practice, no doubt about it. You might wanna check out our other videos or check out e2language.com. Okay, the fourth task of the speaking section is called retell lecture. This is what it looks like and more importantly, how does it sound? So you'll see an image here which will give you some idea of what the lecture you're going to hear will be about. For example, this one might be about, I don't know, university online study or something like that, okay? Then you'll hear a, a lecture that will play for about, well, actually 60 to 90 seconds. And while you're listening to that lecture, you should be taking notes. Then you'll have, after it's finished, after that lecture has finished, you'll have 10 seconds to prepare to speak. 10, nine, which goes very quickly on test day. And then what you have to do is speak for 40 seconds or up to 40 seconds and retell the lecture that you just heard in your own words. Wow! This is a good one. It's a, it's a challenge. This one's definitely a challenge. And it's critical that you do take notes while you're listening to that lecture because retelling this lecture without a set of notes is practically impossible, okay? So on test day, you'll get a little plastic, they call it an erasable note board booklet, which is a weird name, but really what it is is 
It's like a little notepad with a texter that you can rub out, okay? It's very handy and you need it for quite a few of the tasks. Okay, we're nearly through the speaking section. The final speaking task is called answer short question. It's dead simple. It looks like this and what happens is you'll just hear a s not necessarily a simple question. You'll hear a question. They'll ask you uh, usually to elicit some sort of noun like what do you call a blah 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 or what is the name of the thing that blah 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 and you'll have to go ah what's that word? This is obviously a test of your vocabulary breadth, how wide your vocabulary is, and how deep it is. Some of them can be very challenging. No, won't necessarily ask for a noun, probably will most of the time, but sometimes a verb. One of the questions that I got on test day when I did my test was something along the lines of, um, said something like, which of the words refers to the past? And then it had a sentence like, Jack went to the shop on Tuesday. And of course, the answer there is went, because went refers to the past, not Tuesday. So it might ask you a tricky sort of grammatical question like that, but usually, yeah, asking you uh, for a noun, which you just answer, by the way, in a single word or a couple of words. Cool, nice work, guys. You're through the speaking section. Now, let me just promote the wonderful e2language.com. If you do need additional help because you're freaking out, for example, or you just know that you're gonna need some help on test day to get the 79 or the 65 score, check out e2language.com. You can sign up for free. Uh, if you do sign up for free, you get lots of practice questions for free and some live classes. But if you do upgrade your account and decide to purchase one of our courses, you also get one-on-one -on -one tutorials, all the methods lessons, speaking and writing feedback, uh, lots and lots of live classes, which is super helpful for your motivation. Because if you are watching this the night before your test, which I'm guessing some of you probably are, maybe you need that additional motivation through our live classes to help you to study. I understand it's difficult to put pen to paper and study. Okay, you're now into the writing section of the PTE. The first task is called summarize written text. This is what it looks like. You'll see a paragraph of text. I think this is up to 300 words long. So it's quite long, right? And you'll have 10 minutes and you should use all of that 10 minutes. And what you need to do is read this complex paragraph of text and you need to write a single sentence, one sentence that captures the main idea of this and any supporting important sub ideas. So in fact, you need to write what's called a complex sentence. Um, what I mean by complex sentence is it has a main clause and possibly a, a subordinate or several subordinate clauses as well. Uh, cool, that's a challenging one. This task uh, contributes points to both your writing and reading scores because you obviously need to read that paragraph and understand it very carefully. In fact, you should be aware that the PTE test is quite interesting because it has integrated scoring, which means that some of the tasks that we've seen will contribute points to different skills. For example, retail lecture that we saw before where you need to listen and then speak contributes points, obviously, to your listening and speaking scores. Cool. All right. You're nearly at this. There's only two writing tasks, by the way, but um, you'll find that some of the other tasks contribute to your writing score as well. The second one is writing write essay and you have to write an essay. This is what it will look like on test day. Here's the question prompt. It'll ask you about some sort of topic that you will know something about. It's never going to be too abstract. Uh, and in here, you have to write an essay of between 200 and 300 words. No less, no more. Okay, I recommend that you write a four paragraph essay with an intro, paragraph one, paragraph two, and then a conclusion. If you, are, if you haven't written an essay in a long time, which I suspect some of you haven't, you should check out our other video here on YouTube. It's called type in, it's, it's called Write Essay Superstructure, where I go through how to construct those uh, par different paragraph types. The structure is critical. If you get the structure right, like you know how to make, uh, write an introduction, um, the para body paragraphs and the conclusion, and then it makes your life much easier 
um, for this one. Here though, I really recommend that you get some feedback. Um, if you do go to e2language.com, you can actually purchase individual uh, writing or speaking feedbacks. Um, and our, one of our teachers will give you some expert feedback on your writing, just to make sure you're doing it right before test day, because obviously test day is quite expensive. Uh, it's also quite stressful. You want to do it once, you want to do it right, and you never want to do it again. Some people I've seen take this test up to 15 times or more scarily, okay? And some people refuse to prepare. And they think, oh, maybe the next time it'll be slightly easier. Oh, I'll just try one more time. Oh, $300, $300, $300, whoa, bad idea, prepare. Oh, and you should also subscribe to this YouTube channel because we produce really cool, nice little videos for PTE. Okay, you're now into the reading section of PTE Academic. The first task, actually, I think PTE has just recently changed the order of the reading section. Into the comments below, can you tell me if this order, if you've taken the test recently, if this is the order? If it's not, it's basically this in reverse, and it doesn't really matter. Let's just go through the tasks. So the first or the last task that you'll get in the reading section is called reading and writing fill in the blanks. This is what it looks like. You'll get a paragraph or paragraphs of text, right? Da, 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 da. You'll get these little drop down things here, and it'll have four possible answer options. And from the context of the text, you're going to have to choose the right word, and they're gonna be synonymous. They're going to be synonyms, but only one of them will actually be correct within this context. So what this task is testing you is your ability to um, have precise word choice, to choose the right word at the right time to make the right meaning. So uh, this one actually contributes points to both your reading and writing score. Cool, so that's a challenging one. Next one is multiple choice, choose multiple answers. It looks like this on test day. You obviously get your text or your passage of text here. And you get uh, answer options of which more than one will always be correct. You can just choose one if you want, um, or you can choose more than one, obviously. But just be aware that there's negative marking here. So let's say you get this one right, and you get this one wrong, your score will be zero, okay? So just be aware of that. And as I said, you can just choose one if you wanna play it safe. Um, by the way, I should also mention, and I forgot to mention at the start, in the reading section, you're starting to manage your own time. So in the speaking section, all of the tasks are timed individually. So you don't need to worry because it just, you know, you've got 40 seconds to describe the image and then you do the next one, etc. And in the writing section, you should use all of the 10 minutes for summarized written text and all of the 20 minutes for your essay. In the reading section, however, the tasks are not individually timed. You have total time and it's up to you to just move efficiently and also obviously accurately through the tasks. So don't linger for too long on a specific question, okay? You've got enough time to read the text and to answer it, but just don't linger, click next. As soon as you think you've got the answers, click next, okay? Okay, cool. Next one is reading reorder paragraph. This is what it looks like. Um, on the left hand side, you're going to get um, single sentences like this. However, they're going to be in the wrong order. So you don't know which order they're in. Your job is to go, okay, C's number one, for example. Okay, B's number two. Uh, okay, um, A's, uh, sorry, E's number three, etc. And you put it into the correct order. So the paragraph of sentences flows beautifully and coherently and cohesively from beginning to end. By the way, uh, all of these tasks are testing specific linguistic or language skills, right? They're not just arbitrarily created. They have a purpose. They're testing for something. 
So what this one is testing for, for example, is your ability to construct a good paragraph. That means that you can identify a topic sentence. It means that you know that this sentence connects in terms of meaning to the following sentence. Maybe that means that you understand how sentences are constructed with subject, verb, object, and how meaning can transfer from an object into the following subject, for example. Um, there's lots of, I wouldn't say, there, there, there are tips that we give you in E2 language, but more importantly, what we give you are methods. A method is like a step-by-step -step way to solve this problem. Obviously, you need the language skills, and I'll talk to you later if, if you are struggling with vocabulary and grammar. I've got a solution for you later on. But just assuming that you have the language skills, you still need to know how to approach these tasks, what it's testing for, how to, should I be reading from beginning to end, etc. Anyway, that's all on the website at E2 Language. Okay, reading fill in the blanks. This one's pretty straightforward. You get a relatively short text. I believe it's only up to 80 words. And what you have to do is drag one of these words from here into the gap. What this one is testing for is this uh, phenomenon in language called collocation. If you don't know what that means, please look it up. But basically what a collocation is, is a natural sounding phrase of two or more words that come together that native English speakers would use, for example. So it's testing your ability to use these natural sounding phrases these collocations. These ones you should be able to do really quickly in probably one minute because the text, again, is very short. Okay, the final task or the first task of reading, depending on the test you get, is multiple choice choose single answer. This is probably the most straightforward one. You get a question prompt that'll ask you to read for something specific. Maybe it's going to ask you to find the opinion of the author here. Or maybe it's going to ask you to read for what is the attitude of the author here? Or what's the main idea of the paragraph? Or maybe it's going to ask you to read for a specific detail. Okay, so it might have a range of functions. This is critical, this question prompt here. And obviously you need to uh, eliminate these and go, okay, I've eliminated those ones. I think it's option C, for example, or number three. And again, you're managing your own time here. And if you make it to the end, whoa, before we do that, let's talk about the mini mock test. Okay, so this mini mock test that we've just created at E2 Language is super cool. Let me just quickly show you how it works because if you are thinking of taking the PT or you're taking it soon, but maybe you don't have enough time to do a full preparation course, this is the thing for you. Let me explain to you why that is. It's only 49 bucks, by the way, which is much cheaper than taking the real test. Okay, so you get exam simulation. What we've done is we've taken uh, every task of the PT, but instead of doing, say, five describe images, you'll only do one, and here for repeat sentence, you'll just do three. So it's, it's created exactly like the real PTE test, and it's of the same level of difficulty. All the questions have been written by expert item writers. Um, after you've completed it, uh, you'll have to wait 24 to 48 hours. But what happens in the meantime is our teachers are going to uh, grade your essay and they're going to provide you feedback on all of the different parts of the essay. Not just the essay though, we also summarize written text, summarize spoken text, as well as the speaking tasks such as describe image, retail lecture, read aloud, and repeat sentence. So one of our teachers will actually be going through and grading and marking and giving you feedback on all of those different tasks, which is totally cool. So you get this great feedback, but then also you get this overall score report that will give you a good indication of where you're at with each of the skills. But more importantly, what you can do is you can click on each of these and you can go through each of the tasks to see how you're performing on each of the tasks. And why that's helpful is because you might be able to identify which tasks you're struggling with. Maybe, for example, you're struggling with reorder paragraph, or maybe you're doing summarized spoken text completely wrong. So it's great to identify these through this mini mock test before you take your actual test. Cool, all right, and again, as I said, 49 bucks, it's way cheaper than the real exam, 
um, and you get lots and lots of great feedback. All right, you're now up to the listening section of PT Academic. The first task is called Summarize Spoken Text. It looks like this. What will happen is you'll hear a lecture of between six, whoops, 60 and 90 seconds. You'll again need to take notes and then you'll type a summary into this box here. Now you get 10 minutes for each of these and you should use all of the 10 minutes for each summarized spoken text. So this one's a little bit like retail lecture. In retail lecture, you listen, you take notes and then you speak a summary. For this one, you listen, you take notes and you write a summary. So it's almost quite equivalent. And the method that we teach you from e on E2 language is actually quite a similar method here. Okay, next one is called listening multiple choice, choose multiple answers. This is what it looks like. And this is where you begin to manage your own time in the listening section, by the way, just like in reading. So again, you'll hear a lecture of between sort of 60 and 90 seconds. Um, you'll have a question prompt here and you'll need to go through and again, you can select one or you can select more than one because more than one will always be correct. But again, be careful because there is negative marking in this item. Okay, next task is very straightforward. It's called listening fill in the blanks. This is what it looks like. You can probably guess what you need to do. You'll hear um, a lecture here and you'll see a transcript down here, but there are gaps in the transcript. Uh, these gaps usually consist of content words, nouns, verbs, adjectives, or adverbs. Very rarely will you have to write in a function word such as a preposition or article. It's usually the meaningful words, but you need to make sure that you spell them correctly. And what you can actually do is you can actually type as you listen and use the tab key on test day to move between the gaps. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can use the erasable noteboard booklet thing and you can actually write down the words and then enter them into the gaps and then check your spelling and stuff later on. Okay, next task is called highlight correct summary. Now, just be aware also in PT that it might be an audio file like we saw before, or it actually might be a video, okay? Either way, it should be fine. This is basically a multiple choice question, except what you're going to notice is that these are very long answer options. These, are, these consist of two or three sentences. And what you'll notice, and what I'll talk about in another video, is that you cannot listen and read at the same time. So how can you do this one? If you cannot listen to this and read this at the same time, how can you get this correct? Well, again, it comes back to taking notes. And this is why that, that um, noteboard booklet erasable thing is so important for you. We're nearly at the end now. We're on the third last task. It's called select missing word. It looks like this. And again, we have a video, but it may be an audio. So this time you're going to hear a relatively short audio. It'll go for about 30 seconds or so. And what will happen is when the speaker is talking, you'll be listening, 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 but the final word or the final phrase that the speaker says will be cut off and replaced by a beep type sound. And so what you need to do is you need to anticipate and you can also watch the timer, by the way, so you know when the video or audio is going to finish and when that beeping sound will happen. And then you need to go, ah, okay, she was going to say this one here because I understood all of the context of what she was saying and I anticipate that she was going to say this word here. Okay, listening multiple choice, choose single answer. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Again, a lecture of up to sort of 90 seconds. Um, the question prompt will be critical. It's going to ask you to listen for something. Again, it's going to say, uh, what is the opinion of the author about this? Or what is the speaker's attitude about this? Or, or what is the main idea? Or what's the specific detail? Make sure you read that question prompt. You get a little bit of time. I think you get seven seconds before that audio starts to play. That's not enough time even to read the answer options. It's enough time to read that question prompt very carefully, to put it into your mind, and then to listen for that specific function, that, that, that key 
that solution. Okay, now we're up to the second last task. Highlight incorrect words. This is a strange one. So what happens here is that you get the uh, audio, right? Again, a lecture of between 60 and 90 seconds. Now here, we have the transcript. So it's actually the exact same words as what's said here, except that some of the words differ from what the speaker says, okay? And so what your job is to do, as soon as you see this task, you move your mouse right at the beginning and you get ready because you need to move your mouse as the transcript or as the speaker begins speaking and you move, move, move and you identify the word that is different from the audio and you click on it and it turns yellow and you keep going, you keep going, you keep going and then you click on this one because it's different from what it says here and it turns yellow. As soon as you've done that, you click next. This one actually has negative marking, so if you accidentally click on one, you can unclick it, okay? All right, cool. Up to the final task. This is the final task of the listening section and also the entire test. By this stage, you'll be completely exhausted, by the way, because you've been sitting in front of the computer for about two and a half to three hours. It's extremely intellectually intense. You need massive amounts of concentration to make it through this exam, especially the listening section because it's the final section. And what I found when I did my test was in the listening section, that's when you start to get distracted because your energy levels are quite low. It's also quite hard to focus on that computer screen and to listen to the audio. So you really have to maintain concentration through this whole section here. And also what we find with a lot of candidates is people have trouble with time management in the listening section. And a lot of people don't get to the end of the listening section and the, and the final task, which is right from dictation here. And what happens is if you don't complete all of the right from dictation tasks, i.e. you don't make it to the end of the exam, it's going to deduct points from both your listening score and your writing score because this task contributes points to both of those skills. So it's quite critical. It's not quite critical. It is critical that you move efficiently through the listening section. Okay, all of this is about practice, by the way. It's pretty hard to do this correctly on your first go at the PTE. If you do, that's fantastic. Um, if you don't, come back and do some preparation. Okay, so what happens with this one here? Well, you'll hear a single sentence. That's it, a single sentence. So you'll listen very carefully. You'll keep that single sentence in your working memory. And then what you do is you write your single sentence here in this box, okay, as quickly as you can. After you've written it out, you quickly go through and fix the spelling and the grammar, and you click next. I think you get about eight of these in a row, so there's quite a few. And this is the last few minutes of your exam, so you'll be sort of pushing through here. But that's it. That's the PTE exam. They're the 20 tasks. Um, Cool, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, you can click like and leave a comment, that would be lovely. Just before I go though, I've got something important to show you. I mentioned at the beginning that if you're having fundamental English language problems, such as vocabulary or pronunciation or grammar issues, we have this cool brand new website called e2school.com. So not e2language, e2language is where you do test preparation. E2 school is where you build your grammar skills or your vocabulary skills or your pronunciations, pr 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 pronunciation skills or even your general English skills. So you should check out this website here. It's super cheap, by the way. It's $9 per month per course. So it's far cheaper than a language school. And as far as I'm concerned, it's far better. The content is fantastic. We have live classes, everything's there. So. Even if you're thinking of taking a PT like a year from now, perhaps spend a little bit of time in E2 school getting prepared. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. That was a crash course in PT Academic. My name is Jay, I'll see you soon.